answer. Because today, uh, we're doing something extra special. It's not every day where we get to review a game between the number one Go player and the number two Go player in the world who are not robots. Humans, yeah, on the human list, number one and number two. Does anyone know who the number one and number two players are right now? Park Jung Won. Uh huh. And Shin Jin Su. Shin Jin Su, yeah. And do you know who's number one and who's number two? No. Actually, I think of, we're like tied yeah. as of this morning or something. Oh, maybe. I, when I checked earlier this week, it was Shin had the higher go rating. And, uh, however, uh, Shin's also been kind of on a losing streak a little bit, not quite winning as much last month or two. So I don't know what's going on with him, but anyway, they're both Korean, which is interesting. Uh, the next eight best players, I think, or so are all Chinese. Um, I think uh, Iyama Yuta is, is like the second best Japanese player. I don't remember who the, who the current first best Japanese player, but he's they're down like in the 30s, according to Go ratings. So uh, it's definitely, you know, it's uh, the, the top pro lists are all dominated by China, except for really like the one and two spot. <laughs> which is kind of interesting myself. Uh, but anyway, this is a tournament game. I believe uh, the loser of this tournament goes home. This is a, a semi-final kind of match. And Shin uh, is the, the young upstart kid uh, player who's just sort of burst into the scene and, and just was killing everyone for quite a while. Park jung Wan has been number one on and off for the last five years or so. Uh, he's maybe not five years, three years, four years. I don't even know what year it is anymore. Um, but, you know, he's not quite reaching, he's not, you he, he would never look at him and go like he's old, right? But, you know, he's a different generation than, you know, the teenager. So, uh, we have... How old is Shin? I think he's like 19. But, someone on the internet should look it up. Isn't Park Chan Wan really young too, though? He was really young, like, like he's probably late 20s now. Okay. That's a generation away, right? All right, you guys all have phones, someone look it up. <laughs> Someone will tell me. Uh, anyway, this is their opening. All four, four. Nice, right? I mean, who doesn't love an all four four opening? Pros like it, beginners like it, everyone loves it. It's just like it's the mac and cheese of the Go world. You guys all like macaroni and cheese, right? Oh! <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anyway, Shin plays over here. Mark plays up here. So what is this? Mirigo. We call it Mirigo or Manego. Uh, it's also just a standard robot move at this point, where uh, getting double approach into corners, really, we don't really think of it as being a big deal anymore. The robots are really so. uh, Shin plays this move, which the robots are only kind of lukewarm to. It's usually not their favorite, but it's fine. And Park plays the slightly preferred robot move. So two different approaches. Um, we are going to see, uh, I'm going to prelude this game a little bit, um, the most the most baller Joseki going on right now. It's, that's kind of, I won't say rocking the pro world because I don't want to like over the top it, what do you call it, like like oversell this thing. But there is there is a Joseki that we're going to see uh, played off in this corner that's, that's like the new hotness right now that is um, often even confusing some of the, the robots that aren't running for enough variations. So if you want to beat robots, you can learn this crazy Joseki that we're still figuring out. Anyway, that's coming up. Um, so anyway, we're no longer at Mirago, right? We have, we've broken the symmetry already, but uh, it could have gone that way. Shin plays this move next. What do you guys think of this move? It's asking for a lot. It's asking for a lot? No. Oh. Five space extension, that's that's a good relationship to the stone. Approaching a corner is a big move in the opening. This is this is very much a robot move, right? This is type of thing. This move's fine. <laughs> Helps support this fight over here, approaches a corner, it's fine. And uh, do you think white responds? No. And so, right, this is the this is the robot hotness, right? When we're talking about robot moves, there's no more robot than the 4 4 3, three in early game invasion. Um, but as they play this out, you guys ready to hold on to your butts? Yes. Because how could this possibly go violent? Right? Like this, this is such a nice, peaceful variation. White gets territory, black gets the outside. Simple, right? Black plays this one, which is sort of the new preferred way. 
What do you expect White to do? P17 for this one. Or O18. Very good. White plays this one. And this is this is actually to this point old Joseki. Like this is fine. Um, it, was, it was sort of a special case, Joseki, when Black wants to have influence on both sides. This is not the game. Uh, but doesn't mind leaving a defect in between. So Black has influence this way, influence this way, and the defect is actually left there. So this is this is an old Joseki, and it's fine for a while ago that this isn't really being played, expect, except in special circumstances now. But up to here it is. Uh, it's just fine. Uh, but here, uh, oh, sorry, Black does play this move. This is sort of the newer way to make this exchange. And where would you play as Black? O16. Oh, you want to play, the, you know this one. Is that not it? Well, this is, this is let's say, the more natural one. Oh, okay. That most of the robots prefer. Oh, okay. uh, but this one, this one works. I've been playing this a little bit in my own game, so I've really only been playing it as black when I have something else nearby. Uh, just because this immediately sort of devolves into a fight. But this is the new hotness, right? This is the position that all these pros are experimenting with and learning and playing. And uh, again, even the robots don't seem to have complete agreement on this. So, what do you think is going to happen here, if you were to predict? Like, it'd be a shame if White didn't push through. You would think White would need to push and cut, right? And indeed, White does this. And Black does that. And I've seen this most often play with a cut on this side. Though in the game, Park John cuts on this side. And, you know, you better bet your left sock that all the pros are studying this right now. Like, this is, again, new hotness. This is, what, this is something they're all trying to figure out before the other people figure it out. Uh, so... Keep that in mind. <laughs> this is hot off the press, let's go. All right, as Black, where do you play? I try the, the cutting stone so that the two stones don't. Do you want to run this out this way? I was thinking about it, otherwise <laughs> the... Uh, okay, this is not the game. What's Black your next move? Cuts. What's your next move? Push here? Yeah, I'm okay. That's why I always worry about that one white move right there. Him? Yes? I mean, it's safe. No, it's not safe. Watch. Looks like it hits the waste stone first. Definitely hits the waste stone first. That are two somewhere not fun. So how did that work for you? Lost three, four, <laughs> maybe three points. Oh no no no! This is this is possibly rougher than that, right? Black groups and are separated. White got black, black has two weakish groups right now. Actually, if white white, white no, has two more. Yeah, you know, has this Atari if black takes and if. Black doesn't, then there's Aji here, so that's probably slightly better, but this group is still weak. White has the corner, has sender influence, captured stones. This is this is a success for white. This would kind of be a disaster for black. And so we can see we have to be very careful. It's very easy to take a wrong step and end up having this uh, ladder that doesn't work in your favor. It's very dangerous, very dangerous. So just running out here is no good. But attiring from the outside and sacrificing the two stones. Sacrificing. Okay, let's do it. Uh, that one. Sure. Uh, I think it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll compare this to the game result. It's actually we should we should try to remember the shape. So we'll compare, compare it to the game result and see what's better. Uh, but, um, I mean, how big is White's corner? Pretty big. Like 10, 12 points. Uh, yeah, over 12 points. 
depends on this move, right? This is sort of like, these are half, half points for white here. Um, of course, if, uh, if, if for, for the ladder still matters, but there's also this cut still here. This is still potentially a thing for Aji. And so if white ever splits, you know, there's still stuff over here. Very, un still unsettled, like your wall is not settled. We still have lots of Aji. So I think, I think giving up the two stones is possible, but not, not a very good result. Seems a lot worse for black than the other four seconds. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So then why would we play this? Because he knows the real one. Because he knows the real one. <laughs> this is your test of genius. This is your normal move in this shape. And this is also the move you can make uh, if white plays this one. Uh, although, sorry, you probably want to wait till. Uh, okay, don't play this yet. But anyway, this is a shape move. Uh, because on one hand, you're threatening to get out like this, or capture directly, or Hane underneath. Uh, it's, just, it's just a key point. All right, what do you think white does? Q14? Yes. Black's going to push him behind. Next move for white. Extend again. This would be kind of the natural move. Um, however, black will immediately play here and it looks like there's a potential for a problem. This ladder still exists, so the story depends. If, if black can push here again, um, and then this ladder doesn't work immediately, then, then black is totally fine. And the game might place here to make sure that these cuts are exposed. Of course, what's the problem with this move? Yeah, it leaves a cut. Uh, if black cuts right away, what do you think happens? Does white just play R14? Uh, R14. Oh, here? Uh, Oh, yeah. This one? Yeah, just to not. <laughs> I mean, they're both bad. Just to get the uh, Maybe that works. I was thinking White can also just compromise by playing this move. Uh, White can capture this and give up those two. Also possible. But yeah, maybe maybe this works. Um, if Black plays there, mean, tough though. Uh, I'm not sure this works. <laughs> Well, <laughs> promise black wins this inside, right? Well, I don't know. I don't know about this move. Yeah. Oops. Here, here, here. Um, but in the game, black plays here, and so I think again, in this one, this is the simpler variation, right? If black uh, protects this with a move like this. White just takes and Black still needs to come back and fix Aji. That's probably the Black action. Yeah, because this stone's bad. Alright, I should know this better. I don't know. This is new hotness stuff. So, this is stuff I don't know. I'm, so, I'm sort of figuring it out with you guys as well. Um, so, maybe maybe this is a move. Just to get more liberties, so it's harder for them for Black to Well, it doesn't immediately get more liberties. Yeah. Right? This, just extending here doesn't immediately get more liberties. Um, like it works if black can do this, or sorry, if white can play here. But if black can play here instead, then that doesn't work. Uh, 
Uh, for whatever reason, black honey is on top. And I've actually seen this now, I think, in two pro games. So this seems to be the, the sequence. The next move for white, though, is pretty rad. Just to make this shape. And uh, there's some long variations here. Like, if you play this out, like, what happens if white connects this way or this way? And both of them are not quite good enough for white. <laughs> because this group has too much freedom. And so white needs to play this really kind of dumb looking shape. Uh, Shin makes this exchange now. Uh, but instead of blocking here, white connects. So what does connecting here do? Put some cut. Yeah, now it, now it really directly exposes all these cuts in a very meaningful way. Black takes free stuff, white connects, and again, this stone looks stupid, right? Wouldn't it just been better for white to connect? But again, white needs this stone in order to trap this group in. And black chooses to take the outside. So we get Cutsville. White cuts here. You cut on the side that's uh, not as important to you, right? White would rather just kill these stones, right? That'd be amazing. But if you cut here directly, black is going to protect. And then when you cut over here, black gets a nicer shape. And a point. So when you make a cut like this, you cut on the side that isn't as worth much to you. Right? Because if your opponent responds strongly over here, then you make the cut that really matters. If you make the cut that, is, that means something to you, that's the side your opponent's going to defend and get a better result in terms of shape. Uh, black fixes there. White now makes this cut. Again, keeping the pressure on this little stick. Black finds a liberty. We now have this group of five white T-stones against this four group T-stone pointing the other direction. <laughs> white plays here. Black looks for eye space in the corner. We have this Tasuji, and again, I'm, I can't call this all this Joseki yet, <laughs> but again, this is this is the you know crazy thing that's happening right now in the Go world with this extension. Right, these are the variations that these pros are working their way through. Here, extend. This is a. Do you guys want to name this Tasuji? Is that tombstone? It's a tombstone Tasuji. This actually makes it so black can't get two eyes. Has to play here. White finds timing for peep. Black protects well, at least these cutting stones. Those are important, right? Now white comes back to take this Atari and honey. And the reason why this is, doesn't have two eyes is because black can't play there because that's self Atari. After this tombstone and honey. So. If we pause right now, what, what is dead? What is alive? Well, if those black stones in the corner are dead. Yeah, these actually don't have quite enough liberties. These don't have two eyes yet either, though. So, but the white should win, is winning the capturing race. But it is kind of a pain for white to have to come back and play all these moves here. Uh, Black's going to play this Tesuji. I'm not 100% sure about, but I guess it's fine, because the next move is here to peep at this false eye. Instead of connecting, white makes Atari. Black takes the stones. You guys got all this? This is Joseki now, right? <laughs> yeah. Throw in, that's a common uh, Tesuji in the tombstone, if you've seen that before. Black takes again. Now white comes back to fill this. And if we, if we just were to play a move for black, we could play here. White would play here, black here, white can Atari and kill. So you can see white does cleanly win this, although white would, black would get all these sentient moves on the outside. So these are dead. Uh, of course, white only has three liberties over here, so that's kind of also a problem. So we're not done. Black's going to push out this way. White has to crawl, because again, white needs to keep these alive. Push again. 
one, because again, we need to keep these alive. Play one more. All right. Pause. So white will need to take these off the board at some point. So, but we can we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we count that as den, dead, maybe eleven, maybe eleven and a half, twelve makes it there. That's twenty-four points. So white got a twenty-four point corner. What does black have? Influence. Black has the outside influence and, for that matter, um, can, seal, can perfectly seal on either side. Right? This is perfectly sealed over here if we want it to be. And this is actually also perfectly sealed over here if we want it to be. Uh, and actually, there is there is a little bit of a problem here. Um, but we'll see, we'll, I, I won't spoil it because it's going to happen in the game. But just think about this move. This move is actually kind of a, a nuisance for white. Uh, but anyway, this is settled. There you go, Joseki. Boom. Uh, how many moves is that? This, this was a 52 move Joseki. <laughs> Quote unquote. So is this like the new Taisha now? Uh, kind of, yeah. At least, you know, this is, this is the thing that all these, you know, top players, and even not top players, people like me are exploring too, right, in our own games. Uh, there's, uh, there's another YouTube kind of person who does go, uh, Tyler, Tyler Owakawa. You guys know Tyler? Okay, no one watches his channel. But he did a video, his last video I think was all about this Joseki. Um, and, and part of the problem in that video is he just goes through all these variations, it's really fast. And so you're constantly like pausing the video and trying to slow it down and stuff. But Tyler Owakawa, I think I have to, I, I know him, I should get his last name right. I feel bad. Tyler, if you're watching this, hi. <laughs> Go watch, you know, some of these crazy variations that come out of this. Uh, but that's a lot of stones. That's a lot of stones in one corner of the board. All right. So white takes this uh, opportunity. White gets something like sente, which is, you know, in addition to getting a twenty-four point corner. Uh, what do you like here? Do you like white or black? I think I like black slightly. Uh, I think uh, I, put the, I put this in Elf, but didn't run that many variations. And I think Elf liked black like 55, 45, or 60, 40, which in Elf is like even. Uh, but this was White's next move. And the next move for black, um, let's see here. And so. What do you think of this move? It's a killer. I'm assuming it's Sente. Well, why doesn't think so? And so Elf really hates this move right now. Yeah. Elf thinks his timing is terrible because it's not perfect Sente. What this move does do, I'll play it out immediately so you guys can see. Uh, black descends here. If black, the problem with this is if white takes the time to take these stones off the board, then white actually won't have enough liberties to take this group off the board. So white fills in this one. Black fills in this one. White uh, gets ready to capture. Black takes these stones off the board. And then white has to play here. Otherwise, black will take liberty away and white can't approach. So what this move did was it really uh, threatened to capture these three stones directly and save the, this one. Elf does not like this. Elf was like, this was a mistake, Shin. This was too small. And when I first reviewed the game without the robot, I kind of, I, that was my reaction too. I was like, so what did Black get from this move? It was just these three stones. And in the meantime, White was able to do this in the corner. Doesn't. The corner's probably bigger. Just continue playing up here, and you can do this later. So the robots were not a fan of just taking these three stones. But man, black's even stronger now. This is, this is pretty serious influence we're talking about. So if you're black, how do you, how do you use this influence? You just gave your opponent, uh, and actually this time we can actually kind of count. Right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so twenty-four points. Or so. Hi, 
I use this influence. Seems like a move is owed in the upper right corner. Yeah, this is kind of, it's, I mean, it's really unfortunate White got this move, right? This move is really big. White's like, okay, we're gonna build this way. We're gonna take some more influence. And Shin uh, does this, or sorry, Park Jung Wan does this. White does this cool shape move to link up to the corner, as well as threatening to push here, as well as threatening to fight against these two stones. Triple purpose move. Shen again builds a central influence. Now he says, that's great, you can have more central influence, I'm just gonna take more territory and more corner. Then black tries to seal in. There is fighting spirit. Go forward a few moves. More fighting spirit. It's actually really not really fighting spirit because both players know how this is going to end. White gets the capture here. And again, black says, My central influence. Meanwhile, how is this use? How is this influence? Seems like all it's doing is cutting down how much white can develop there. It's not like getting black much. Yeah, we're really not making points yet. Like, we're really just saying, Hey, I'm. Still building something out here. We don't know what it is yet. Of course, this leaves a pretty major defect, so White takes advantage of it immediately. Um, the other nice thing about this defect for White um, is Black would really like to be able to, to do something down here later, but again, if there's a there's a liberty problem, so Black actually fixes this way immediately to again expose these defects. So White finishes there. If, uh, I mean, it would be possible for White to give up these two stones and play another move out here. I don't think this is a terrible idea. I didn't, I didn't look at the robot, but again, Black is just, is just banking on this so much. Um, just playing a move right there right now actually might even be reasonable to give these two up. But this is still, I mean, this is a huge move. <laughs> right, kind of just completes the corner, helps these two stones, and again, this stone still has Aji. So if we look at the points here, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a 20 point corner. So we've got a 24 point corner, 20 point corner, and two sort of undefined corners. White is already with Comey over 50 points on this board. How many points does black have? Really hard to find them. Really hard to find them. All right, here we go. Two corners, pretty well defined. Black has just invested everything in the middle. Yeah. Why do you say wow, Alex? Because it's not very common. Not common at all, right? This is common, really common here. But we're just giving White fourth line territory, right? White could just build this now, this fourth line, and we're just happy getting a wall here. Or at least that's what Shin wants. That's what he's asking for. Here, and he continues to press. All right, so what do you think of this territory? Is this territory? I think that's betting it all on two. Is it you? I think yeah, it's betting it all on two. Oh, it's betting it all on, like, on two? What do you buy two? Well, bet, betting all, all on one number. Oh, all on one number. Oh, betting on a number, I thought, yeah. So yeah. it's betting it all on red or black or, you know, 52 or whatever the roulette wheel has, right? Like, that's big, uh, especially if, if black can, uh, a shoulder hit here or extend here, this this gets really big really quickly. So if I mean if even though white has you know 45 points on the side, uh, should probably get another 10 here, at least another 10 here. You know, right now we're looking at 70 points for white, but this is more than 70 points, right? If black gets all this. Uh, plus, you know, there's Aji over here, so Black can, you know, make some easy points along the edge. Already has made, you know, these about 10 easy points here. So what do you do as White? Black's not out of this game yet. How do you, Park Jung Wan, the former number one player in the world, how do you teach the new number one player in the world who unseated you that he's wrong? 
to think that there's enough points out here. Say that you're not going to get everything in that Dale Moyo. All right. So how what would you play? Either that start point, like this one. The left hand. Oh, this one. Left hand side. This this one seems kind of dangerous. Better try to break into the right. So I'm going to like this? Yeah. What about G13 instead? Alright, next, hold on, we'll play this one out. Next move after this one. Follow it on the long gauge. <coughs> so we just push up. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem here. Potential problem. So this is actually a dangerous way to play within the site because of the object from these two stones, right? If uh, white says, no, you can't save those stones and disconnect everything, black will just cut you here immediately and fight. Yeah. So this, this, way, this way, it looks like white can get in that way, but white can't actually get that far without risking you know, a, a, bit, a big fight to turn up because of this option. You had you had another G13. idea? G thirteen. G thirteen? Oh, you want to cut this way? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, well, I'm parked on lawn, so I figure that I can do something to my opponent. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's still this move here. You gotta defend. Sure. Okay. It's actually really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, not too many friends nearby. Well, as you can guess, Park John does not come in from this side. I would be to play somewhere in the middle, so because those two three groups could be somewhere just in this. Maybe, but here he's going to play more directly. He's going to push and cut. Mm -hmm. He's going to look at this move and go, okay, that's you know, you're, you're, there's a there's a, a poker saying, right? Uh, if, if you can't identify the sucker at the table within 10 minutes of sitting down, you are the sucker, right? If Park John is looking at this stone, like this is the sucker. <laughs> like this is the one that's not quite right. This is the one that is, has, white has a little bit of support to actually fight against. And so after this push cut, black plays here. Do you know this move? This is uh, Tesuji. What does this, if white cuts, what does black do? Oh, G, G6, double target. You got tricked, you got sealed in. That tricky? It's nice, it's a nice move. Uh, let's see. Here, here. So it basically forces white to fight. White makes an exchange first, just to make sure that the corner has, you know, not going to get harassed too much more, and then we're fighting. Black gets to play here. White makes one more move in the corner to guarantee life. If we don't play this after this move, this is a very dangerous capturing race. Again, Park Jung Wan. Uh, he's very strong at counterattacking. That's sort of what he became known for when he was uh, ranking up to the number one player. Uh, in these tournaments, uh, he would find these little moments where the opponent just, in the middle game, where the opponent just asked for a little bit too much, and then that's when he would just go vicious. <laughs> and so this is a really good example of uh, his strength at that part of the game. Black makes proper shape, right? One, two, three, one space jump away. It looks like all of black stones are pretty strong, so what are these two white stones going to do? Harass the left side? You would think so. But... Park first starts asking some other questions, looking for resources. Hey, can I just have some Aji here? No, no, you cannot have Aji here. Okay. But now I have a stone here. So when I jump out, uh, 
how does this black stick look? You can't really kill it, but it's not super safe either, right? How do these three black stones look? Again, you can't really kill it, but you know, you're not really safe there either. So with this combination, right, we, we found the sucker stone, and this, this is the point where white can actually kind of make two not really weak, but not really strong groups for black. And that's the really important part to find here. Like this, this is, this is the, the nexus of any black weakness, right? It's very, it's very amorphous weakness. There's not like a direct way to kill anything. But it's just like, hey, there's a stick here and there's a couple, three stones over here and neither one have completely guaranteed two eyes. So Black knows this as well. You know, Shin's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to protect both these groups in Sentei as much as possible. And if we can do that, then we can go after this white group. So he comes up with a shoulder hit. Again, the idea is take the outside, make sure this group can't connect down here. And at the same time, if Black ever needs it, he can come down here and make actual, not just life, but actual points. And uh, this corner will be pretty weak at that point. So what do you think white does? He didn't try to make sure the stick would stick, or try to make, try to support your other stones that are kind of, uh, I wouldn't say trapped in, but the two stones, stones on the left are yeah. kind of unhappy. Your, your, first, your first intuition was correct. <laughs> well, he says, look, those two stones are fine. They're good enough. This is what matters right now. And again, if you're going to make this side stronger, what is white going to start exposing? The weakness of this side. And again, we have an extra friend here now, right? If white were to get an extra move in here, this, this starts to feel like white has all the momentum. Black takes a peep and... Uh, Bond, and then black defense. Of course, white gets more free stuff. Push. White plays on nice Tesuji, right? Threatening to link up as well as helping get out. Also, almost makes ice space too. Very nice. I like this move a lot. This is perhaps just one of my favorite moves of the whole game, right? It's a very simple shape move. Again, it's one of those moves that does three things threatens to make ice space, helps it get out, and threatens to cut through here link up to that stone. It's a very cool shape. Black responds here. What is the meaning of this move? Is it just every last point counts? Black really wants this point, so black doesn't want to play there? Makes it a little bit tougher for G10 to become an eye. Good, right, this is, this is trying to spoil white's shape. At some point, black would really like to peep here, or at least prevent this from becoming an eye. So black is not even worried about leaving weaknesses behind in order to do this. At this point, uh, Park feels like he has time to play here. <laughs> and even, even though this is a local move to help the, the life of the left corner, this is very much keeping this stick in mind, right? We're not just going to do this or this just to make our eyes and live. We're gonna say, hey, if we're gonna live, we're gonna live by getting out and connecting. Chin does respond a little bit down here. Oh, sorry, white responded there. I missed that one. And white connects here again. Uh, so now the corner is alive. Like white doesn't have to wait anymore. And white has this little head poking out a little bit further. So white feels a little bit eh, like, like maybe this stick has a friend. So black strengthens this side to make sure that white can't run in that direction. All right, you ready for another Tetsuji time? You want to help the black stick. Not the white black stick, the white stick. What do you do? Attack the, the one black stone that we were mentioning earlier. Wait, this one? Or no, the, one? the one in our... The G14 stone? Yeah. This stone. Nope. <laughs> that's, that's, ah, dangerous. <laughs> well, this wedge. Again, Park is really good at finding weaknesses when there shouldn't be any. 
In this case, uh, does this group have two eyes? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice just to force this group to find the two eyes right now? So here, none of these moves are, you can, you can understand each one of these moves. None of them are terribly hard. Obviously, if black Atari is this way, white just goes down and captures. So black only has this move. White, for that matter, only has this move. And now do you see this cut here that's been exposed? How do you defend it as black? You defend it like this. That makes you a nine down pro. This is how Shin defended. But what does white get to do now? You get to play. So Shin cuts. And the thing is, now this cutting stone, right, is just threatening to capture these two, make two eyes. And then do you see this black group? Again, that group actually doesn't have guaranteed two eyes yet either. So Shin has to work really hard to manage both of these. So first, we deal with the weaker side. Push. Uh, white takes the time here to play this peep. It's good timing. White finds more time to take this peep. Also good timing. And black has no choice but to just answer these peeps. Now white can Atari this way. What do you think of black's shape down here? That is awful. That is just awful dumpling. I, I think it's so ugly. This is, this, is like, this is like a person with really bad eyebrows. Just like big black and way too thick and painted on the board. It's bad eyebrow shape. Okay, why is going to play here? How does black feel over here? How does black feel over here? Busy. <laughs> Very busy. Black really can't find time to really even start the attack on this thing. Black plays his Hane. White links up. Again, black's not alive down here, so black needs to find time to play this move. Black plays there. Black gets a free Atari. And then black has to finally come back and live like this. So, all right, think back to the white stick. How does the white stick feel right now? That, that whole exchange, did white get anything? Did white help the safety of the stick? Yeah, a lot. Black yeah, what, what helped, what, what in particular? Like, it looks like we gave black a bunch of free moves near our stick, right? right? We can attack those, and also, there's a bunch of cuts at M8 and O8, and we also got K'd and sent them. Yeah, there's a target nearby, right? All these white stones, these are all strong enough. They're all connected to the corner. So it's really, we only have one thing to worry about. And if, if we have one thing to worry about and our opponent has one thing to worry about, and maybe it's more than one just because there are multiple places to cut here, we're fine. Like, we are just fine. So, Park plays this move, which is good endgame. Um, but it also says later on, you know, hey, I can just make eyes again too. Right? I can get this. I can make this previously eye that you fought over back into a real eye. Uh, black is like, no, you don't get that. <laughs> Mine. But there's a problem here. If Black's going to take the time to do this. Uh, there's, we're gonna, we're gonna have to suffer a little bit. White's gonna take this Atari. Black has to come back to protect. Otherwise, if we, if we connect here, White's gonna push through here, right? That's a big problem for the stick. So we don't, we, we like our stick. We don't want our stick to die. We actually don't mind giving up this stone as long as White doesn't get any eyes from it. Again, Black wins this game if that White stick dies. If that White stick lives, Black loses the game. So White's like, oh, all right, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good. At this point, black now fixes that, that cut. And white's like, all right, let it ride. Continue with gambling metaphors. All right, what did, can, first of all, can white connect through here? No. No. Um, but 
Uh, how's the health of the stick? It's really bad. It's really bad. And if white finds a free move or two, then white can connect this way. And so by getting all these moves, even though this, these don't connect directly, again, <laughs> this group is kind of a problem for black. This group is kind of a problem for black. Even though white's not alive, how is white feeling? As long as you have something weak, if you're weak and you have something weak nearby, you're fine. So white's totally fine. Black plays a move here. Again, just trying to form some high space. White plays this move, which doesn't form eye space directly, but it does pinch black in and make black's potential eye space much smaller. All right, next move. Oh, by the way, sorry, there was an exchange here played earlier. Uh, I totally forgot. They did play this. It doesn't. That's fine. Right now. It, it'll it'll matter in a few more moves, but. This was always there, right? Black can always do this. Alright, white comes out. And now, hold on, let's count. Black has a problem here still. Black is kind of okay right now, but maybe still has a problem here, slightly defended. How about this black group? It's a problem. It's, it's a problem. <laughs> there's, a, there's a problem here. We're not feeling too safe. Three problems for black, one problem for white. Yeah. Yeah. Elf, Elf does not like White's position here. If you put this in the robot. Is it black? No, it's, well, Elf is like, this is 90-10 already decided for Black. I'm oh, sorry, for, sorry, I misspoke. Black, Elf does not like uh, Black's position. Yes, I'm getting confused. Uh, Shin plays this move. And... Um, I, when I went through the game, I was like, this is the losing move. Hmm. When I put this in Elf, Elf couldn't really tell me. This was like, it was already, Elf, Elf was already like, this is 90-10, this is Black's already lost the game. So I put this in Elf, it like loses like 5%. So it goes on like a 595 game. So obviously it's not the losing move because something else already happened much sooner. Um, but this move, I think Black would actually have a better chance of Black play here. And I didn't put this in Elf to confirm this, but... Um, the problem with this is this just threatens to link up, right? It doesn't actually link up. And this, technically, you can say this doesn't actually link up either. But uh, when you see what's going to happen, you'll see why this move might be more valuable. So my shin plays here. Make sure it's not, this is disconnected. And if this group gets in trouble, we have a backdoor. But it takes two moves to link up. And that's, you really can't play a move that doesn't do, you know, even a full move, full move's worth of stuff. Uh, so anyway, it gives White a chance to come back here and just capture this stone, or at least uh, just about capture it. Black's going to find all the Audrey Black can and just harass. This is cool. Clamp, you know, uh, clamp, attach the outside, clamp it, double clamp. And yeah, now Black has to turn with this stone. White gets to connect. White officially has one eye. Does one eye live? No. No, it feels like there's still hope. Black's gonna make sure we don't poke out any more eyes. Or, uh, or sorry, there are no more eyes that we need to poke out really. White plays here. Black can keep this disconnected. Right? Again, there's no friends here. This is the only friend. Uh, but now white plays here. And so this move makes sure black can't connect. This doesn't really form eyes for white directly, but it also means now we can spoil any more eyes in here for black. After this move, black basically gets a bunch of central moves. Play here. Mark has to play here. Black can Atari. Do not connect. <laughs> Just take. Uh, and at this point, uh, Black feels compelled to connect here to make sure this group is alive, unfortunately. Um, but once we do that, White plays here. And I don't know if there was a time problem or what, but White found a pretty easy way to kill this group. And this was the last move played. 
And so how many eyes are in here? It looks like one. How do you make it? I was looking at the A line, but that's about it. Oh, this group. Well, I mean, yeah. but, okay, so how many eyes are on the edge of the board? One. Only one. Well, here, if we, can play, if we play here directly, uh, what does white do? A9. Um, I'm thinking white's going to play here first. And so if, if black lives, right, um, it's fine. But uh, I mean, this isn't how I thought it went. <laughs> Okay, so I guess there actually is. I, I, for some reason, I assume this was a move, but it's not. All right, maybe I hallucinated. All right, so maybe Black can live. <laughs> All right, so if Black can live. Black is the son of D6, right? Hold on, this one is not there. There's this one here. Yeah. All right, so question, yeah, why doesn't Black play this? I thought I had this game figured out, but I totally didn't. It looks like it just lives just with two eyes, but that's about it. Yeah. Right, but that's not good enough for white, right? Like, white, white if, if this lives, white only has one eye right now. And these players should keep playing. Let um, me make sure I have all the tricks. What is Al? Is it Black's turn right now on this? Yeah, Black's, Black's move. Right. Yeah, black's move. Yeah, it feels like this uh, this move right here is the move. Maybe I thought I thought white I thought when I when I looked at this I was like oh yeah but then white will cut you here. But no, that's not actually true, right? Can white then just live by trying to like play f8 and try to make an eye there, and if black. Depends it cutting off those three stones or something like that. Or so like here? You D10? Could, you could play, like yeah, D10. D10. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's uh, not quite And enough. then black has to connect. Oh, oh yeah. um, this is not your, once black connects, it's not an eye anymore. This is, I like this idea. This, this is something, yeah. this is an idea. Just not quite the uh, the right idea. Hmm. So I guess the question now is, what I have in my head right now is, not if what if black plays at eight seven and lives, but what if just white just lives up, just lives directly then. That well, well, okay. So if if black's gonna play a move over here. Uh, is that make an, two eyes yet? Like it feels like white. white you're gonna have to eventually play. Um, I mean, anyway, here's. If you want to defend this, white can falsify this eye, right? So like, there's zero eyes here as long as you don't want white to have an eye. Oops, let's read there. That's just not an eye. That almost makes an eye. <laughs> but again, white has this move. Oh, maybe that's fine. Huh, okay, I totally didn't have this figured out. Uh, this move's not there. This move's not there. Yeah, so, so here, if black, yeah, after this move, black just resigns, right? So why not just play here? That's my first question. I 
like this doesn't work. This false eye. Uh, it's like black can just things like this. I don't know. That's impossible. That makes an eye. White, black, white, throw in, black, white, black, white, black. So that lives for, it does live for black, but not for white. What a terrible way to end this. Uh, so. Yeah, what a bastard. <laughs> what about E7? E7 for white? For white. Well, it's black's move. Oh, it's black's move. Right. So, but here, yeah. Okay. First of all, refute, here. refute this move, I guess, right? E7. Yeah, I kind of looked at this too. Let's say we connect this way. All right, then you go D7. This doesn't look helpful. Yeah. How do you use that? Hmm. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna throw a stone here, you kinda have to give up the stone, right? To get liberties over here. Or to get, you know, so if we do this, and if our opponent connects here. Well actually, okay, we can do this in this order. Right? Here, here, here. Here. Atari. Oh, that looks. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, let's do that again. <laughs> All right. All right. We got this. We can do this. We can, we can find an eye here. So, first, threaten to make the second eye here. Is that the only way to re remove it? It looks like it. Nothing else over here does anything. Okay, so you have to play there. Throw in a stone. If you don't capture it, you die. So have to capture Atari. Again, have to capture. There we go. Can't poke out the false eye. So there you go. So that's why he resigned, because this white stick lived. Where are Black's points? It's running through the middle, but that's not there's a hole over here, there's a hole over here. Uh, Plus you can get, black can get really uh, tied down by uh, by being pushed, pushing back on black in mm -hmm. that game. Oh yeah. Well wherever, wherever black goes, right, if black defends over here, white's just gonna come in this side, right? There's, this is kind of like me eye. Fixes. Let's play there, right? Seems pretty good. And simple. Okay, if white if white can can basically remove all the points here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. It's about forty points here. Plus another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's really optimistic end game. So plus another 25. So maybe black has 65 points in this board. This is pretty unchanged, right? 45. Uh, another 15 or so here for 60. Another almost 10 here. We'll say that puts you at least white, at least 65 plus Comey. Uh, plus center, so. White's kind of up by like this much plus Comey over over ten to fifteen points. And that's and that's that's without it, actually seeing how much gets destroyed. White can actually destroy a little bit more down here now, right? Because we filled in this liberty. We can play moves like that. That's not that move. Um. 
All right. So good. Park Jun Won lived. Winning one game, of course, doesn't make you the number one player in the world again, but uh, yeah, if the ratings are close enough, and we'll get a little narrower. So anyway, the things that I would like you guys to remember or take away, uh, going back to this Shoseki, this is the new hotness. Uh, in the end, you know, giving your opponent 25 points to play that extension doesn't necessarily always feel like a good exchange to get all that outside thickness. Um, which is why I really only play this if I have something nearby. <laughs> you can see how this might go very differently if Black just already has a stone over here, for instance. Uh, you don't have to fight, you can just basically win. Um, how did we get into this Joseki? Do you guys remember it? Good. We need a black 4-4, four, four. white plays a 3-3. Three, three. Next black move. Black down. Block. Uh, one move. Nice jump. Also judge. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can play this this way too. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that this exchange for white may or may not actually be good for white. The jury is out, um, but we're figuring that out. Like it, like it seems like it should be good for white, right? Because it exposes this, it shorts the liberty on these two groups, which is which is really important. Um, I haven't really seen this being played out by professionals without making this exchange, um, but I suspect you might be able to do this later if you need it. Is my is my feeling? This exchange might still exist even after the cut. So we have it here, here, and then the version we looked at today was this cut on this side. Which is uh, fun. But even if you cut on this side, this also, if, especially if you have the ladder, this is the other thing you want. If, you, if you're going to play this way, you want to have the ladder. It makes a very big difference. Um, even if white plays this way, this is really hard for black to deal with. Like you're, sh like you're fighting black, but your, your shape is not great if white has the ladder. Anyway, try it out in your own games. Make your opponents pee their pants. Guys, this is coming. This is, this is, this is, uh, we're still like learning 3 3 variations, right? Three, three, these opening 4 4 3 3 variations, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we should have all figured this out by now. This is a simple 3 3 invasion on a 4 4 stone. Like, what could be more simple and go than that? <laughs> See, I've done, I've done that class. I think I've recorded that class at least twice, where you know it's the four four and three three invasion Joseki class, and like they're all wrong now. <laughs> all right, no one's playing them. I guess actually, this there's a few that are still being played, but in special cases. So like here, what extends? Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. This one still gets played. White plays here, black plays here, white plays here, black tanukis. That one gets played. I don't know, all the other traditional ones. Yeah. Some other time. All right, so was that a fun game? Yeah. Including the end. Hmm? Including the end. Yeah, we made it to the end. And I think, uh, actually, the, so again, the real losing move was actually Shin taking these stones off the board. Hmm. He was giving white two moves in this corner. That's probably the real moment where um, Black lost the momentum. If Black just kept, it, kept these stones there and didn't take them off right away, Black could have still built a lot more thickness in the side um, and maybe could have even still had Sente to come and still did what he did over here. So this was a big tempo loss. All right, so that was good. Thanks. <laughs>